Um, so we're gonna start standing today. And because Sheila has no heat, we're gonna do some things to warm the body up first. And then uh, if you are in a chair and you need to stay in a chair, you can modify this. And I'll jump back and forth just to give you those options. Okay, so first, let's come to standing. And again, if you need to stay in a chair, you can just sit forward. We're going to start with shaking the tree. So this is what you would do in a chair. The main thing to remember is that you're lifting your shoulders. So like you're squeezing your shoulders up to touch your ears and then drop really heavy and open your mouth. <sighs> Big exhale. Now I'm going to bend my knees. So this knee is it's like a spring, right? We're shaking. It's called shake the tree. So lift and drop your shoulders. Only you know what's going to feel right for you. Your feet do not leave the ground. So we leave them planted on the ground. Feel free to open your mouth. And if you want, we're going to shake the hands like the branches of the tree. You want to just lift your arms up as much as it feels right for you today. Say good morning, sunshine. It's a beautiful day. And as you bring your arms down, leave a little space between your body and your arms. Like you have an orange underneath your armpit. See if you can lift your arms and let them drop as if your arms aren't even connected to your body. A little smile on your face <laughs> and then slow it down and we're going to take a few moments with each movement or every few moments and just lay your hands on your abdomen close your eyes if you feel unstable lift your toes up so you feel the full bottom of your foot on the floor soften your shoulders move your head back a little bit so your head is over your shoulders Soften your face. And be aware of the full surface of your foot on the floor. So if you still have your toes lifted, lay them down. Bring your awareness to the bottom of the feet and know that your feet are absorbing all the energy from the earth. We're imagining your feet are connecting to the earth. Pulling in that wisdom, bringing it up through our body. If you're feeling any tingling after that shaking, that's what we call chi. Chi means energy. And our whole goal here today is to connect your breath with the movement so that you're aware of that energy that's moving through you because that's the power of our body and its ability to heal itself. Now we're going to just let your arms drop and we're going to go into bubbling well lift. So we're going to leave your feet under your hips, swing your arms back again, just do what you can and how high you lift your arms. If you're able to lift your arms up and come up onto the balls of the feet, take a breath in, drop down heavy on your heels and let your arms fall back like you're throwing something out. And I'm opening my mouth so I get rid of that stuff your body doesn't need. And what's always very good, take your mind and as you're exhaling, imagining you're letting go of anything inside your body you don't want. <sighs> Throw it out. <sighs> Again, drop heavy as if you're trying to wake up someone that's below you or maybe you have a neighbor below you and you wanna try to wake them up or maybe annoy them a little bit. <laughs> Lift up. <sighs> Do three more. Ah. 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 
Good, just let your arms swing lightly. Take a moment. All we're gonna do is bend your wrists. So we're not lifting the arms or bending the elbows, just flatten your palms toward the floor. And right, my hands turned out to the side. And with your eyes closed again, bring your attention to the center of your palms. Very small, tiny little circle, like you're circling around the head of a needle. Make tiny little circles with your palms, keeping your hands in the same position they are now. Notice if you're feeling any tingling in your palms or between your fingertips. Check back in with your face. Make sure your forehead is soft. Fully empty your breath. Feel your abdomen moving in toward your spine. And as you breathe in, visualize your breath coming up through the earth, through the bottom of your feet, flowing up through your legs, through every organ, bone, and tissue, and through your neck and shoulders and up around your mind. And each exhale, your body's releasing, letting go, and sending out into the universe all that it doesn't need so that it can be recycled. Now we're going to touch our fingertips. Just drop your fingers down toward the floor and turn one palm forward. So one palm is back and one palm is forward. Again, we have our arms out away from us, just about as much as if an egg or an orange were under your arms. I'm gonna bend my knees gently again. I have my feet apart, so my feet are near the outside edge of my hips. And I'm gonna bend, so I'm gonna exaggerate here first. I'm just twisting my hip forward and then twist in the other direction. Okay, so feel, practice that first. So your shoulders are gonna stay still and you're going to twist. Now, we're going to connect the shoulders and the arms. So take whatever palm, one side has the palm forward and one side the palm is back. Take the side where the palm is forward and as you guide your hip forward, your palm is going to follow. Come out as far as you can and then reverse your palm. So the other palm is gonna turn forward as this hand turns back. I want you to just imagine as you rotate your hip from one side to the other, come out as far as you can, reverse the palm. And as your palm comes forward, you inhale. Turn the palm back and exhale. You can feel free to close your eyes as you're practicing this. And reverse, inhale. Imagine you're sitting in a pool of warm water. Turn the palm, so as soon as you get as far forward as you can, reverse the palms. And just feel your fingers and palm, noticing any tingling again. The eyes closed. If you get dizzy, leave them open or maybe downcast. Imagine which pool of water you would like to be in. Would it be a stream in a mountain or a warm Caribbean sea? Maybe the ocean, somewhere exotic in the world, or maybe the Jersey Shore. Maybe you have a pool. <laughs> One more in each direction. Just imagine you're floating. Very nice. Great. Now we're going to lift your hands up. So take one palm, like you're lifting something into the sky. It's gonna come over your head. From the side, I'm just brushing down the front of my body on the opposite side. This palm's gonna come up, 
circle around, turn your palm down, and I'm not touching the body, I'm just brushing it, but the palm is facing the body. We're brushing down, inhale, lift up, about shoulder height, begin exhaling. And we're gonna shift our weight into the leg of the side that we're brushing down. Empty the breath. Breathe in, lift your arm to the sky. Exhale, feel the weight sink into that leg. So we're putting all the weight in the side, substantial. Come back neutral, inhale. Exhale, sink. So this leg is empty. Breathe in. Arm just lifts up as high as it feels right for you today. Just turn your palm toward your heart or organs. Brush down. Again, neutral, lift up and sink. Breathe in, lift up. Turn the palm toward your body as you exhale. Again, notice any tingling that you feel. So lift up, bring your palm up into the sky, collecting that healing energy. Exhale, turning your palm in toward the body. Lift up, so very easy, gentle way to start getting the lymph nodes warmed up through the chest and under the arm. Lift up. And we're also brushing down both sides of the body. So this helps to balance out the autonomic nervous system. And this time, you're gonna bring your hand up and we're gonna touch your hand to your body and brush down. So you can do this either touching the body, which is very comforting. If you're feeling very anxious, this is a nice way to bring yourself back into balance. So maybe you've been watching too much CNN. Exhale, slide down. Let's do one more on each side. Good. All right. Now just shake your hands again. Let's do, as I mentioned, we're gonna do that balance. So. First, we're gonna start with opening the hips a bit. Use a chair or a wall, whatever you have nearby. This one's a little more challenging, but we're gonna start with that. So maybe you have a little more energy. Doesn't matter what you're holding on to. You may not need to hold on to anything. It's just there for support, like a good friend. We've been shifting our weight from one side to the other. So right now I want you to shift your weight toward whatever your support is. So your other leg feels empty, okay? Maybe even lift the heel up. You can leave the toe on the ground. See if you can lift your foot. If you feel unstable, I want you to lift your ribs up. Make your spine tall like you're growing up into the sky. Now gently tuck your tailbone under. So just leave the foot on the ground to get yourself set up. Even bring it back to your side. Just try to keep the weight off of this one foot. Okay, we're practicing just making one leg substantial and the other empty. So for balance, we're working the psoas muscle. If you tuck under the tailbone just a little bit, lift your ribs up, you get the full advantage of using that muscle. Sink the weight into this leg, flex your foot and start moving it back and forth. You can touch your toe front and back as you like. And as your leg goes back, bring the arm forward. So same arm and leg are going in the opposite direction. Feel free to use your support. Go slow. Your swinging doesn't have to be high. And one thing I want you to try to practice is to make sure you're not moving like this. This is, um, hmm, that will put you off balance a little quicker. So we're gonna try to keep the upper body still and just let the movement come from your hip. And maybe your leg doesn't swing as far that way. That's okay. There's no prize, remember? We're just going with what feels good for you today. If your leg gets tired, take a rest and watch or go back into it and you feel ready. Do one more swing. 
and then flexing your foot, put your heel down first, shift all the weight into that leg. Great. Your choice. You can leave that chair or whatever you're using on that side, or you can bring it to the other. You're going to do what feels good for you. Lift the toes of the standing leg, spread them out and lay them down. Again, check in. So tuck under, lift up, substantial leg, empty. Always one side is easier than the other. So start out slow and gentle and just experiment today. It's Monday morning. If you're feeling a little unstable, you're probably not alone in the world. Lengthen your ribs up away from your hips and remember to use your support as you need to. If you feel like your foot is getting all wiggly, slow it down and try lifting your toes up and not and touching your toe down on front and back. Remember, you're not here to judge yourself. The world is a cruel little place. We're here to assess and notice how one side is different than the other. And do one more swing in each direction and then flex your foot, plant that foot down on the floor. Now we're gonna open our feet a little wider than we normally would. You can get this out of the way for a second. Put your hands on your hips and bend your knees. And we just practice tucking under. So let's tuck under first, tucking your tailbone under. And now like you're doing the bump, if you're of the age group where you remember the bump in school, bump your hip to one side and now tilt your tailbone all the way under and then bump to the other side and then curl your tailbone back. And now connect those four points and make a circle like you have a hula hoop or a holiday reef on the floor. Now lengthen your ribs up away from your hips and see how that feels different. Go in the other direction. My knees are bent for a reason. It's just like the trees in nature. If things are rigid and brittle, they'll break in the wind. So we want everything to have a soft bend so your body is more like bamboo, swaying softly in the wind. Okay. Now, slow it down and just slide your hands up to your ribs. We're gonna do three more in each direction. Those knees are bent and we're gonna practice keeping your ribs still. If this is not a comfortable position, you could also cross your arms. But if you're able to open up those arms to just get a little more circulation. So now try this with your ribs staying still. So just isolating the hips. Go in the other direction. Think of north, south, east, and west, or tracing a line around that hula hoop. Okay, let's do one more the other direction. Great. Now, bring your body to stillness. You're going to keep your feet planted right where they're at. And today we're going to do a little bit of heaven and earth. So heaven and earth, I'm going to come a little closer for you to see what I'm doing with my hands, but you want your feet just a little outside of your hips so you're comfortable with your stance. And remember, we're going to string together some things we've already done. So you are going to be twisting with the knees bent. Your arms are going to go, they're going to slide past each other. So they're going to cross without touching. And as one hand goes up, your palm's going to press up and the other palm presses down. Okay. So if you keep your thumb pointing up with your hand in the sky, you're going to feel that wrapping the tendon around the bone. And that's what we call steel wrapped in cotton. So I'll do it a little bit at the sides. You can see what I'm doing. Cross your arms, breathe in and your hands, this one's coming right next to your hip bone and the other palm goes up to the sky. Now I want you to twist gently, keep those knees bent. 
Come back to center, cross your arms, take a breath in, press up and down with the palms like you're pushing on a pillow or a cloud. Twist. Come back to center, breathe in, press, open to the sky. Come back, breathe in. And the general rule with Qigong and where your gaze goes is a little connected to how you're feeling today. So if you're feeling a little unsettled and you need grounding, we bring our eyes downward, connecting to that earth energy. You want more energy uplifting, look upward. Crossing, nice and slow. Exhale. Come back, take a breath in, press as you exhale. And one more on each side. Inhale. And exhale. Good. And as you bring your hands back to center, we're going to cup them for a moment and we're going to make a little fist. And the next thing we're going to do is called opening the door of life. So if you open the door of life in the morning, this is a really nice thing to do to help activate energy in your body. So the one spot we're going to be tapping is at your hip bone. And the other hand is going to tap right under your ribs. So this is the adrenal or kidney area. And again, think of those hips. Don't be stagnant in your body. Your arms are going to be... <laughs> I always think of a tether ball. If you've ever seen a tether ball be dating myself again, but tether ball is a string on a pole with a ball at the end, swing and tap. And in our practice, these hands start here because the hips are where the white blood cells are, are created. And then our lower back where the adrenals and kidneys are, create, are located. And that's where the stress hormone cortisol comes from the adrenals. We're gonna get that out of our body and you can swing. So if you let your hips swing forward and your arms just lie, or you can bring it a little slower and tap more deliberate. Now we're gonna lift our arms up a little higher. So bend your elbows and tap right underneath your rib cage. Tapping on the left side, your spleen and pancreas on the right side your liver. Remember, each of you has had your own experience. So when we start tapping in an area that might be something compromised on your body, be very gentle or just use your fingertips and tap in wherever those tender spots are. Or skip it if it's really sore. And the hip move forward so the whole body is engaged. When you come up to the top, this is where the lungs are located. So get rid of the dead cells out of the body. It's a mini version of the tapping we do later, but it's very effective, focusing just on the organs. And come back down. Good. And now we're gonna take our hands, touching the chest, slide down the front of your body and sweep off the top of your feet. And we're gonna do that three times. Brush down the front, sweep. Good, and now we're gonna do the back. So come up as high as you can, down the back of the hips, back of the legs, sweeping. We will be tapping later, but I just wanna show you that these brushing movements, let's go down the arm, we're brushing the meridians. So as we do this brushing, we're literally tapping into all the meridians of the major organs, which is our heart, lung, liver, spleen, and kidneys. Good. All right. So let's take another moment right now and just lay one hand over the other and close your eyes. 
for just a moment, notice right now the difference in how you're feeling and how you felt when you began. Breathe in fully, feeling your ribs expand and exhale completely. If you're feeling tired, feel free to sit down. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work on the neck and shoulders as requested. So we'll do the wise owl turns his head. There are two variations to this. Again, you could be seated if you're feeling tired. You're gonna take your palms and turn them out. So your palms are facing forward and your fingers are stretched out as wide as you can make them. And now I want you to imagine there's rays going down through your fingertips like you're being staked like a tent stake in the ground. Squeeze in your shoulder blades just to open the front of your heart. And then soften your arms back to your side. And now with your fingers stretched out, your chin is parallel to the ground. I want you to turn and look over your shoulder. Keep stretching out through your fingers. See if you can make your chin parallel to your shoulder so the head isn't up or down. Squeeze in those shoulders just a little bit more. Open the front of your body. Reach down through your fingertips. Keep your teeth parted. Long exhales. Bring your head back to center, soften your arms, close your eyes for a moment. Feel even and slow breath. And we're gonna open the arms again, stretch out through the fingers and look over the other shoulder. Lift your chin, feel free to close your eyes or actually gaze back and see how much of the room you can see if it's really, painful please ease off stretch out through those fingers and without judging yourself just see how this side feels different than the other make sure your legs aren't locked and bring your body back release why don't we all sit down if you can feel free to sit down for the second part you don't need to stand I'm just giving you that offer. The next section, we're gonna do the same fingertips. So they're spread out wide, right? You're reaching down toward the floor. Your arms are out 45 degrees. I want you to tilt your head towards one shoulder. So stretch out through your fingers, reach through the fingertips. Keep your arms a little bit away from you, like a tent. Bring the ear right over top of the shoulder and whatever shoulder your head is over, let that arm empty. So we're just focusing on reaching down through those fingertips, stretching out. So fingers are open wide and actively stretching. Eyes are closed. Check in with your teeth. Make sure you're not gritting them. And every time you exhale, see if you can feel your ear emptying a little more toward the shoulder as any tension drains across the shoulder, down your arm and out your fingertips. Open your mouth on your exhales. One more long exhale. Keep your eyes closed and lift your head back up. Release your arms. Take a breath. And let's do the other side. So we always start out, the fingertips open, long spine, tilt your ear toward the opposite shoulder and stretch out a little more through those fingertips so they're open wide and actively stretching down toward the earth. And whatever Shoulder the, arm, the ear is over top of, that's the arm we're gonna let go of. So we can just focus on stretching down through those fingertips and check in with your face. Remember when there's dis-ease in the body, it shows on the face. 
So if you're straining, open mouth, exhale. And if you feel any tension, just imagine it's rolling down your arm and out through your fingertips. And remember, there's always one side that's more tight than the other. So instead of judging that, just give your body permission to let go as far as it wants to go today. Soften your arm, bring your head back up, close your eyes. Remember which side felt a little tighter because we're gonna repeat it not to torture you, but to help bring your body into balance. So go back, I'll just pick the first side that we did. You're going to go to whatever side felt more tight for you. And if both felt equally tight, do two long breaths on each side. Or if you're doing one side with your eyes closed and your teeth away from each other, try putting a smile on your face as you empty your breath. That smile sends a message into your body. It brought you this far on your journey. Give it a little gratitude. And gently lift your head back up, release your arms. Notice how your hands feel, if they're feeling a little tingly. Good, all right. So now we're gonna do one more movement which could be done in a chair. If you're tired and you wanna sit down, that's perfectly okay, all right? If you wanna stand with us, it's your choice. We're gonna do this three times. So after the first time, if you need to hang into that chair or any time, switch back and forth, right? So this is called the 10 part Qigong breath. We're working the whole body. And again, I'm gonna come close. You can see, I'm gonna let my hands be close to my body, but not touching. And my wrists are gonna come up like a puppy dog that's begging, right? <clears throat> so inhale, lift your hands up. So the wrists lead, bring your hands up as high as you can, open your arms, tilt back if you want. And now as if you were sliding your hands down a wall, you're gonna bend your wrist and exhale and fold from the waist. Come down as far as you can with the crown of your head, relax to the floor and as you have vertigo, then tilt your head up so you're gazing forward. And with your hands above the floor, you're gonna make little circles. Let your head hang and imagine that your hands are pendulums on a string from the shoulder. Reverse in the other direction. The circles that you're making with your palms like you're swimming in a, or your hands are playing in a mud puddle. Now plant your hands and lay them on the inside of your legs. Breathe in and bring your hands up the inside of your legs. So we're just sliding them up your body. Come around to the back. Inhale. So we're tracing again the meridians. Bring your hands out under your arms. So my hands are in a little bit of a, I have my fingers like a beak. Just tracing out under the arms. Now open the fingers and shake like branches of a tree. Next part is optional. If you can do it with us, that's fine. Feet are a little wide, bring your hands together. Or actually first we're gonna hug a tree, sorry. Hug a tree. Now plant the palms together and as much as you can bend down into a squat. Press your feet into the floor and your palms together. Inhale, lift back to the sky like a tree lifting into the sky. Open your arms. Turn your palms toward the earth. And one more time, we're gonna fold from the waist. The crown of your head's gonna come down. And just as we did before, your hands are gonna hoover a little outside of your feet this time. So your circles are bigger, playing in that mud puddle of the earth. And as you bend forward, I want you to take a moment to draw your abdomen in and push your spine up. So you're opening up the space between the vertebrae. You can even see if tucking your tailbone under is an option. Again, you could do this in a chair. Breathe in, bring your hands up the back of your legs. 
we get into the kidneys and we come back around to the front and we start over. So I'm going to demonstrate it once in a chair. So if you're standing, you're just going to keep doing what you were doing. In a chair, I want you to bring your hands up the front of your body. Open your heart to the sky on the inhale. Exhale, bend the wrist like they're sliding down a wall. Come down as far as you can. If you can touch the floor, that's fine, but I want you to lift up through your spine and make your hands hoover over the ground so you're rotating in little circles. Sorry, that's my hands. Now breathe in and slide your hands up the inside of your legs. Trace around to the back of your body. Come up the back of the spine. Under your arms, shake the fingers. Breathe in, hug your tree. And now on your next breath, palms are together and just lean forward and try pressing your elbows on the inside of your knees. So you're opening up your hips in a prayer position. Now inhale, press your palms together. Bring your hands back up into the sky. Opening your arms like the canopy of a tree. Turn your palms back to the earth and we're gonna bend over once more. So I want you to curl your shoulders forward and really arch your spine, tuck your tailbone under. Point your head down toward the floor as much as you can and with your hands on the outside, play in that bigger mud puddle. A little smile on your face. Maybe you don't like mud puddles, but you'd rather play in finger paint. You can pick your poison. Feel any tingling in your palm as we gather that earth energy. Breathe in and bring your hands up the back of your leg. Come up your hips. Once again to the kidneys and around the front. And we're back where we started. So you can stay seated or standing. We're gonna do one more round. If you're really tired, take a break. Breathe in, lift the wrist up, lean back. Bend the palms forward, exhale, fold from the waist. Press your spine up. So if you roll the shoulders, curl the spine, tuck the tailbone under, whether you're sitting or standing, it works the same way. Little circles with your hands above the earth. Keep your head hanging down. Breathe in, slide your hands up the inside of your legs. Bring your hands around to your kidneys, up the back of your spine, under your arms, out through the arms, shake the branches of your tree. Breathe in and hug that tree. And this is a nice place if you want to combine palms together, you can't do a whole squat, just sit down and put your elbows between your knees Come all the way down if you can. So you pick, bring your palms together, lift up into the sky, your big tree, opening the branches of the tree. Turn the palms down. Exhale, fold from the waist. As you begin to fold, tuck your tailbone under. So I'm, I'm going to super arch my spine. So I'm opening the space between the vertebrae. Just tuck the tailbone under, let your shoulders drop. Crown of the head comes down, circling. And the other direction. And you can do these circles as much as you want and then bring your hands up the back of your legs. And we're going to end it. We come from the kidneys to our abdomen and make little circles. So you could be seated for this as well. Circling into, we call this spiraling the energy in to the lower dantian, which is the area below your belly button. And that's the area that I believe that all of our life force energy is stored. So lay your palms over that area once more, breathe in, feel your ribs expand. And slowly empty your breath. 
Take a moment again to notice any tingling that you're feeling. Soften your face. And we're going to go to our tapping. So this, again, could be in a chair. I'm going to move it forward. So when we come to seated, it'll be a little closer. You can stand or sit. We're going to bring your hand into a fist. Uh, remember, traditionally, it's done with what we call beaters. I did find these on Etsy the other day under massage toys. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But tap. You could use a whisk broom. We're going to go down the arm. You can tap pretty well with these, but you don't need to. With your hand, you can use your fist. You can use your fingertips or an open palm. Remember, we want to think of your body as a in planes. So we have four planes. We're going to go, when we get to the bend of the elbow, give some extra tapping. Come all the way down to the end of the fingertips. The point of this is to flush the dead cells out of the body into the bloodstream. And remember that your skin is an organ. And when you come to your palm, nice help tap in the center of the palm. And while we're here, we're going to use your thumb, press right up into the middle of your palm. This is the center of the heart meridian. And we're going to walk to the outside, come up under the knuckle, and we're going to move up through the finger. So I'm just squishing. Rotating top and bottom and then a pinch at the end of the finger. You're going to again do the top, bottom and sides pinch. So this is good for neuropathy. We're bringing the blood into those tissues. You can do this any time of the day you want. There's no negative side effects to helping the fascia get blood put into it, right? So always start at the center of the palm and then wiggle under the knuckle. If you're feeling any tenderness, maybe you have some arthritis. This helps to warm the joints. Top, bottom, and sides of each digit. You can do this with your eyes closed too. You can do this while you're listening to music, laying in bed. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Come around the whole outside of your thumb. So that's a big joint. So make sure you come to the base. Again, if it really hurts, it's asking for you to give it a little extra attention. Just always pinch at the end. And then we're going to come to the other side. So you're going to tap, start at the side of the neck, go down the arm. Tap in the bend of your elbow extra. So these deep bends are here at the elbow, under the arm, the hip, and behind the knee. And every day you want to try to tap into those areas because that's where major arteries get compressed when we're sitting or staying in the same position all the time. Your body wasn't meant to sit all day. Tap into that palm and then you're going to take your thumb, start in the middle, come to the outside edge, and off the end of the finger with a little pinch. Each organ is connected to a different finger. When you get into the more esoteric parts of learning about acupuncture and the meridians, or think of it as the arteries that connect to your major organs. Because remember, your nervous system starts with your spine, but it emanates through your body and ends in your hands and your feet. So that's why the tapping and the jumping we did is very helpful for your organs. Now you choose how you're going to do this, but in the middle, do some light tapping right under the collarbone, fingertips, knuckles, palm. This is for the thymus 
Remember, the thymus is what uh, regulates your immune system, so very helpful during our COVID moments. It's reinforced, you can walk around, pretend to be Tarzan. I forget what his girlfriend's name was. <laughs> now we're gonna go to one side, lift up your arm and tap under your arms. We're getting those lymph nodes. And just do what you can again. Find what works for you. Any little bit is helpful. Come down to the bottom of your ribs, back around under the collarbone, down the front of your chest. The benefit really is tender. And then we're gonna go to the other side. So start at the top. You can make sounds. Tap down. Ah. Play around with it a little bit. And then take an open hand, smack across your shoulder blade. And then lean forward, same arm, or again, this is where these tapping tools come in handy, but they're not necessary. Just turn your wrist and tap best that you can, depending on your shoulder mobility. If you can find a little whisk room in a dollar store, something that's helpful too. We're going to do the other side. Patting yourself on the back. And then, so you could even bend over and do both hands at the same time, tapping down on either side of the spine. So we start in the middle and we go toward the outside edge of your body. Down to your pelvic bone. So I'm going to stay in the chair so you can see where I'm at. And then come around and do the front of your hips. And I'm going to stand up here. It's easier for you to see. You feel free to stand too. If you aren't feeling up to it, stay in your chair. Tapping right at that space where you feel the curve between the two bones. You can do pretty hardy tapping in here. And then we're going to go both hands in little circles under the ribs in the bowel area. So again, you're going to go with what works for your body, connecting to the healing that your body is needing. If it feels really tender, yes, you could just rub it, sending a signal in. Again, if it's painful and you're under your ribs, that's probably because you're tapping in on your diaphragm. So that's normal. Now we're going to take both hands and we're going to go in that bend. So when you sit, right, there's a crease. And that groin is what we call the quas. So tap really heartily into this area. And now we're going to go down the front of your leg. So if you have a chair and you can't bend, you could always put your foot up on some part of it for support. Again, just do what you can. Come all the way down to the bottom to your ankle. And then come to the side at the top. One hand or both, you pick. Maybe you need one hand to hold on. That's okay. No one is grading you. <laughs> come to the inside now. Again, we're tracing down those meridians, the back of the legs, the kidney, and when you get behind the knee, extra pounding in there. So if you're sitting, you could be smacking behind the knee, down to the ankle, back to the other side. So just take a little pause moment, feel how those two legs feel different, right? Come back to the other side. I'm going to go down the front. And then side of the leg, down to the ankle. Inside, all the way down. And the back. So make sure you get your glute like you're spanking yourself. Go down the back of the thigh. Really heartily in behind the knee. If you're sitting, just smacking behind the knee works too. 
Good. Now, take a moment and bring yourself to a chair. And we're gonna do a little bit for the face. So we don't wanna let that out. Again, skin covers everything in the body. So rub your palms together. They should probably already feel a little warm. Lay your palms over your face. Lengthen your spine so you're not slouching in your chair. And now lighten your touch. So your palms are barely touching, fingertips are barely touching your skin. Bend your fingers so that your fingertips are touching your eyebrows. I'm gonna move closer. Slide your fingertips from your eyebrow to your hairline as if you were ironing out any lines in your skin. Now we're gonna open our fingers wide, circling around your hairline and rotate your fingers in little circles. Keep your teeth parted for this. And reverse. Keeping your fingers wide and spread apart just like they are, comb your hair back all the way to the nape of the neck. Do that a few times. So your fingers are open, scrape all the way back. One more. And now take your fingers and use your ring finger right on the inside edge of your uh, corner of your eye on the side of the nose. Because spring is coming, we're gonna do a little bit for the sinuses in the next few weeks in case you have allergies. So rotate in both directions about eight or nine times. And then slide your fingers down to the crevice of your nostril and make about nine circles in each direction. If it feels tender or a little bit painful, that can be normal. It's connected with if you have any blockage in your sinuses. That's all we're working right now. So again, just a little more rotating later will help open that up. And we're gonna use your ring finger and lay it over the top of your eye, right at the middle. So if your fingers were in line with your pupils, we're gonna slide straight down under the bottom of your cheekbone, push straight up under the bone. You're gonna feel a little dent, like a crevice that your finger will move up into. That's the point. Again, make sure you're not clenching your teeth. And then go in the other direction. So if you or anybody you know struggles with sinus issues, this is really a nice way to help loosen that area up. And when you're finished with your circles, bring your ring finger and middle finger together. Place your finger at the corner of your eye and slide it back to your hairline and massage at your temple. Nice one to do any time of the day. And often we hold tension in the face without even being aware of it. So if you feel like you're a person that gets a lot of headaches, it's handy to keep a mirror nearby and just check in on that mirror and see what you're doing with your face. Because often we'll be crunching our teeth or wrinkling our forehead without even being aware of it. And when you've finished your circles, bring your ring finger back to the middle of your eye Slide it back up to the middle of your hair on your eyebrow. And we're gonna do circles here. Again, average about nine in each direction. Now bend your fingers and bring your knuckles together. Now we're gonna start at the middle of the forehead. And again, just like you're ironing out any lines in your skin as we pull out toward the ears.
And now lay your hands lightly on your face and come up to the crown of your head and over your ears. And back under your chin. Inhale, lift up. Exhale over the ears. And do one more. Next, we're moving to the feet. <laughs> we are at 11.30, so if you need to go, that's fine. Thank you for joining me. If you want to stay for the foot massage, that's what we're going into next. So what I want to invite you to do is to stay for another five minutes. Take your socks or shoes off. If you're unable to move your ankle over your knee, but you have a dryer ball with the little bumps on it, use that as your foot massager because it's very effective. And again, that's good for your neuropathy. So that ball may be painful at first, but your body will adjust. And for our time limit, we're gonna bring our knuckles together. And you're gonna press from the heel toward the ball of the foot. If it feels really tender, it's okay, it's normal. But it may just be your body saying, hmm, give me some more attention instead of sticking a sock on me and jamming me in a shoe. <laughs> you can take your thumb now and you want to work right under the ball of my foot. So either your thumb, a knuckle, traditionally the elbow is used, and rotate. Whatever, whatever you can use to reach that point. and then press down the side of the foot. So again, we're gonna use the knuckles to save your fingers in case you're having any tendon issues. Use your other hand, go across the top of the foot, or you can use your thumbs like we normally do. Pull the toes back. Make your fingers into a little claw massage under the bottom of your toes. Your other hand's just gonna cup the ball of the foot. And we're gonna use both hands, pinch your fingers. Start with any toe at the bottom, just like you did your fingers. You're gonna pinch and wiggle up the front bottom and sides and pinch when you get to the end. Again, if one toe feels a little more tender than the other, Give it some more time a little later while you're watching something funny on TV. Remember to keep a lot of humor and laughter in your life right now. It's an important part of healing. Or you could just, you know, go downtown and sit on a bench and watch people. That can be entertaining as well. Pinch. And when you get through all of your toes, take your opposite hand and thread it between the toes and rotate your ankle. <laughs> I know it's not comfortable, just do what you can. And rough top and bottom of the foot. And we're going to go to the other side. So you can either put your sock back on or stick your slipper back on. And when you get to the other side, start over. Sorry. So again, use your knuckles. Maybe you've had some other injury or surgery and you can't lift one foot. You can only do one. That's okay. Remember that dryer ball or a tennis ball. If you're an animal lover, there's probably a dog or a cat toy around that would suffice. And again, thumb right at the bottom, the bubbling well point. And then using the knuckles or your thumbs, go the side of the foot across the top. So you're either using your knuckles or both thumbs. We start at the ankle and press down and out. And now use both fingers. 
Start at the bottom and wiggle up to a pinch. Pull your toes back when you're finished. Make a claw with your hands. Massage at the base of the toes. And then take your fingers, thread them between your toes like you're holding your foot. Rotate your ankle. times in each direction. <clears throat> and then take the palms, you can smack them together if you want to get them warm again. Just rub the top and bottom. And remember, there is no downside to these. So if you are in a position, maybe you're in a Zoom meeting and it's a little boring, pull your feet out underneath the screen and give yourself a little foot massage. <laughs> no one on the screen is going to know what you're doing. <laughs> if they do, they're probably going to be envious. Good. All right. When you're finished, again, take a little moment, stick your slipper sock back on. 